The disservice that horror writers and filmmakers do to otherwise innocent everyday things or objects is honestly kind of hilarious. The Ring with videotapes, Halloween with William Shatner, I mean the IT movies cause clowns to literally lose work. So I figured I'd jump on board this train and see if I could slander eggs. The short was a uniquely weird one for me because aside from the concept, there was so much that changed as we filmed it, even through post. Everything came down to figuring out the best way possible to present the creatures given it was the first time I've worked with 3D VFX. I'll get into how those lanky dudes came to be, but first there are a couple of 2D VFX I'd like to touch on. The 2D effects were done all in After Effects and rely on the rather simple tricks used for all the previous films we worked on. For the most part, they were done with masks and rotoscoping. Uh, for the moving eggs, I found it easier and more convincing to use the roto brush tool to select the egg and then let After Effects do its thing. The shot of the figure coming through the egg was something that I had in my head for a while, so the rest of the film was sort of built around this shot. We put a bit of bone and chicken with some fake blood inside the egg for when it cracks into the pan. Originally we had more liquid and less meat, but that looked a little bit too lame, so we tried to redo it with a bunch more meat and gore inside of it to make it disgusting. Also, fun fact, but the song that the character is listening to in the film is made by my uncle, Steve Clark, so big thanks to him for helping me ruin eggs. As I mentioned earlier, the creature was a 3D character designed in the program Maya. I'm going to speak rather generally about this process because it's very long and this is my first time doing it, so if you're looking for a tutorial, there are a ton you can find out there on YouTube to walk you through this whole thing. This is not going to be that. The creature was started inside of Maya, creating a base mesh. This mesh was then exported into another program called Mudbox, where the fun stuff happened. For my purposes, that's where I did all the detail on the model. It's funny because you never really could see any of this fine detail I tried to put on these guys, but it was still fun to do nonetheless. It's definitely a good thing that you can't see this though, because although there is detail on it, it still is not at the level that uh, holds up when seen unobscured. After I'd finished the detail on him, I uploaded the model to a website called Mixamo, which rigs the model, which essentially means it gives it bones and joints so that it can deform properly and be animated. Mixamo then lets you apply different pre-recorded motion capture animations. Uh, I could have animated this myself if I had known how to do that, but uh, Mixamo is, is well used for this kind of a thing for, for beginners, so I tried to take advantage of that. The problem was that there was no animation for reaching out for the shower curtain, so I had to find one that I could manipulate into appearing like it was reaching out. The actual animation that I used was a shaking hands animation that I just trimmed. It's pretty hilarious to see the models that you've created trying to look all scary, but at the same time doing mundane things like shaking someone's hand or doing a backflip or something strange. After I had my animations, I brought it back into Maya, and I tried to match the lighting from the shots that the creature was supposed to be in using digital lights in Maya. This was especially important for the flickering blue light at the end because the light, the flickering, had to match the flickering in real life. Perhaps the most important part of the entire process came when I had to composite the 3D models into the shots, and this is the process I actually enjoyed the most. If I just slapped the model into the shot and didn't do any compositing, any color correcting, it would look like this, which is pretty horrific. But slowly, I added blur, grain, color correction, a shadow, and I masked around some objects to help it blend in. One thing I really wanted to do was the slime dripping off of it as it rises up and grows. Uh, so I found these slime assets that are free online to download from Video Copilot's website. Um, I have linked to that below if anyone is interested in that. Um, and I just tried to slap those on where I could, and I thought it just added a little bit of dynamics to, to it coming out of the, the shell, if you will. The shadow behind the curtain turned out so much better than I anticipated given all the complications I had with that sequence. The main problem was that I wanted the creature to be crawling on the ceiling in the bathroom, or something a bit more flashy uh, initially. But when I realized that the model was going to look like this if we saw it up close, I knew it would have to be somehow obscured or silhouetted. 
I initially tried some close-ups of the creature's hand coming out from behind the curtain, but it just looked so fake. I really liked, though, how you could see the hand just a little bit behind the curtain before it came out. So the failure of that shot led me to come up with the shadow behind the curtain. That's typically how things go with filmmaking. You mess up on something and stumble right on into the next thing that works. To get the shadow behind the curtain, I brought in the character model, blurred it a ton, darkened it, and then I masked some areas on the curtain to make the creature look inconsistently dark. That way it matched how the wavy curtain would be inconsistently dark if there was someone standing behind it. I added some more slime here as well. For there to be a shadow behind the curtain, the light in the bathroom would actually have to be inside the shower because it's still a silhouetted shadow, but there is no light inside that shower in real life. So Gavin, who is the actor, he stood in the shower with a little LED light and manually tried to flicker it, but it was hard to make this look right, so we ended up doing the flickering digitally by having a light version of the shot and a dark version of the shot that are alternated back and forth in After Effects. That actually ended up better because I could control how the light was flickering to make sure that it matched the flickering on the creature. Finally, even though the shot was done on a tripod, I really wanted it to look like the camera was pushing in. So I used a little trick to fake this by cutting out the door frame and the inside of the bathroom and then having them both move towards the camera at different speeds. So it creates this illusion of pushing through a 3D space. The final shot of the film was a lot of work, but it was also a lot of fun. It was sort of a combination of techniques used in the other two creature shots. Since I wanted to be able to control the flicker of the blue lights in post, I did the same thing as the bathroom by having one shot with the lights on, one shot of them off, and then altering between the two of them in post. This also helped me make sure that the flickering uh, matched the flickering of the lights on the creatures. So that's it. That's how I ruined eggs. Um, I hope... It was enjoyable to you. Thanks as always for watching.